If you're looking for a great personal note-taking app, you can't do better, or maybe you can, but I don't think you can do better than Google Keep, than taking a good solid look at Google Keep. I know, I know, I know. Everybody says, wait a minute, Steve, you're an Evernote guy. Evernote's awesome, isn't it? Yes, Evernote is awesome. But Evernote is not a great personal note-taking app. It's not great for quickly capturing notes. Keep is terrific for quick capture of notes and being able to do something with that information once you've captured it. I will show you that all today on Dottotech. Google has done a terrific job putting together Keep and making it a terrific personal note-taking app. Now, are there, there are better apps for long-term storage and research and some other vertical tasks, but for a basic personal note-taking app that works the way you work, especially if you work inside of the Google ecosystem, if you use Gmail and Google Docs and Google Chrome as a browser, if that is your personal mix, regardless if you're on Windows or Mac or Android, Google Keep is gonna be a terrific choice for you. So let's dive in and take a look at the features that really impressed me with it, Keep and some of the ways that I use it because I do use Google Keep on a day-to-day -day basis now. If you have a Google account for Gmail or for Google Calendar, you have access to Google Keep. You'll find Google Keep under the waffle menu. If you haven't yet used it, you click on Google Apps and you scroll down until you find Keep. If you click on that, you'll be brought into your version of Google Keep and it's attached to your specific Google account. So if you have multiple Google accounts, you will have multiple versions of Keep depending on which account you are signed into. I'm signed into my business account here. I've also got a personal account that I also have another version of Keep in. So that will allow you to avoid confusion in the future if you say, wait a minute, I thought I saved a note in Keep. Well, you might have been in a different account when you saved that note. Now, it is a simple note-taking app. It, try, it doesn't try and be too, too much. It's really designed to facilitate note-taking on the fly while you're online, while you have ideas, and then quickly accessing those notes when you need. A big part of, the, of Google Keep is how it integrates with the mobile app, which we'll be showing you in a moment. But for, to begin with, we'll just start on the desktop here with it in Chrome. Two types of notes. You can have just a plain text note, and you can also have a checklist. Now, I, this checklist here I created in order to make sure that I hit all of the right points that I want to cover in today's demo. So we'll be able to keep track as we go through the demo. But you can see that we've got a nice little checklist here. I've already said that it's a good personal note-taking app, so I can check that off. You can obviously keep notes in it. I'm talking about we can keep lists in it. And you can see every time I check one of these things off within it, it's checked off down here in the bottom of the checklist. But it also works terrifically just as a text-based note-taking app. You can be clipping things from the web, clipping ideas, typing ideas in, and you can save uh, text into notes as well. You can also, if you choose to, add images to notes. Let's add an image and let's make it unbelievably cute today because I, we have the new puppy in the house. So you can also include images in the notes should you choose to cho add images to your notes. Uh, so you have a, a lot of flexibility as far as what you save. Of course, you can save anything that's text-based, URLs, anything like that. Now, the view that I'm in right now within Google Keep is the one that I like. I like to work in a list view, but you can shift from list view to a grid view should you choose to where you have a lot more information density appearing on the screen. So you've got that flexibility. One nice feature within list view is if you have a certain list or a certain note that's really important, that's top of mind or that you're working on, you can pin it to the top and that's gonna keep that note at the very top regardless of how many new notes you add in the future. Now I'm gonna point out right now that Google Keep is great at taking notes, at collecting notes, but it isn't as good a tool as say Evernote at arc archiving huge volumes of notes and organizing them into notebooks in different subcategories. You don't have multiple notebooks within Google Keep. Instead, what Google Keep does is it gives you labels. You have labels that allow you to attach a label to any one of your notes, which allows you to sort the notes into different groups if you choose to do it that way. You can sort your notes by all of your notes or you can add new labels and they can become the uh, organizational structure. But it doesn't do a job of creating project notebooks and the sort of thing that you might do, say, in an Evernote. Now, one thing that Google is very good at is really their strength is it's terrific. They have terrific search capabilities. So it doesn't matter if you've got a lot of notes and maybe they're not super organized 
organized, you can always find what you're looking for through the very robust search. And you can see that I can search based on tags. I can search obviously based on text, images, all of that sort of stuff. I can search based on any different criteria. So search is something that you're going to master if you use Google Keep and it will become your best friend, especially as you start to, do, uh, to collect a large volume of information in Keep when you need to return and when you need to recover it in the future. So the labels are, I think they're, they, they aren't as robust, obviously, as what we find in Evernote, but they do a good job of creating some good structure that you can work within. Now, any of the notes that you have, you can convert into a checklist or you can convert back into text. If we just click down here in the very bottom of this checklist, we can make it a regular note. We can delete, uh, sorry, we can hide the tick boxes. There it is there. And it will convert it into a straight text note. And if I want to turn it back into a, into a checklist. I can ask it to show the check marks and we can see them all listed out here as well. The checklists work really well, but I want to point something out to you that's quite cool. I'm good now they have the ability for you to collaborate using the notes as well. So you can take this note and you can share it with another individual. Now I've shared it from my business account here to my personal account. I've shared this checklist. So let me just show you how that looks because that's a pretty cool feature. I'm going to jump over here and I've got that my personal uh, Google Keep is I've got it in dark mode. So we can tell the difference between my personal account and my business account. And here we see the exact same checklist that we're working on because I shared that with this account. As soon as you share uh, a, a, a checklist or as soon as you share a Google Keep note with another Google account, it will appear in that person's Google Keep account. And if I go through here and I want to say, oh, I've done this, uh, this task, I, if I check it off here in my personal account, when we go back to our business account, we see that it is now checked off. You see, it's gone from here. And if we open the full note, we see that the convert a note to Google Docs has indeed been checked off. So as a collaborative tool, it works fairly well. I wouldn't say it's an ideal collaborative environment for managing your tasks. High-end task managers like Asana are going to do far more for you. But for simple processes, again, I, I, I think that might be the, the, the overriding uh, term for Google uh, Keep is simple. If it's what you're looking for is simple, clean, not complicated, Google Keep excels at those sorts of processes. Now, along with choosing different labels for your notes, you can also choose any of your notes and you can add a colored background. You see down here along the bottom, you have a list of the different uh, attributes that you can apply to notes. Uh, this is where we used, we set up a collaboration with the note, but I can also change the color of the background of this note. I can change it to yellow to make notes stand out. This works really well, especially when you're in the grid view of being able to identify uh, immediate tasks that you want to accomplish, say, by choosing uh, a color for the the tasks. So that works pretty well as far as coloring your background and again, organizing your notes a little bit more effectively. Now, the next thing I want to show you is reminders and reminders is going to start to introduce how well it works in the mobile space to us. If I turn this note into a reminder, I can choose to set it up to remind me that I have something to do in this task later today. I can assign a time and I can assign it any way I choose just as far as time-based basic reminders. But there is something way cool, really cool about using Google Keep Reminders. If I select a place to be reminded of, then what will happen is I can go and because this is integrated in the Google ecosystem, it then integrates with our location services in Google Maps. And if I choose to say, you know what, I want to be reminded when I go to the local drugstore, when I go to London Drugs, that I have to pick up something. And if I start typing in London Drugs, you see I've got all the different locations and they don't have my personal location here. So I'm going to keep going. And there it is. There's, there's my local London Drugs. So if I say I want, to be, I want to be reminded that I have this task to do next time I walk into London Drugs, my phone is going to ping me and say, Steve, remember to pick up toothpaste. When I, next time I'm at London Drugs. This feature is ever so cool if you apply it correctly. And it introduces the whole concept of the mobile app to us, which I want to show you now. So if we go in and take a look in the mobile app, we see it right here. This is it, it on my iPhone. It's identical on the Android phone. And you're going to find all the same basic features as we find in the desktop version, in the mobile version. We can change the view from list view to grid view. You can search your notes. And if you tap on that, you can see that you can access the different labels and all of the different navigation here in the notes. 
But the mobile version, the real strength of the mobile version is retrieving information that you want when you're on the road, which we can see will do a very good job just using the search and the normal navigation. But it's also creating new nodes and collecting new information when you're on the go. Now, the they've got one aspect of Google Keep is really powerful and super impressive. And the other is, to be perfectly honest, kind of pedestrian and still a little bit disappointing. I'll start with the disappointing part to begin with. We can add images to a Google to our notes in Google by just tapping on the camera and either choosing an image that we've taken a photo of already or using our camera to take a photo. But here, as I say, it is kind of just average because it just takes a photo. The Evernote camera has way more features as far as document capture and scanning capabilities, etc. Whereas the Google Keep camera is just the straightforward camera. Take a picture, you can store it. We can later convert the text, uh, the image into text if we want to. It will do those things kind of post-processing. But the camera itself, as I say, kind of disappointing. And I look forward to when Google ups their game as far as cameras in Google Keep. Now, having said that and saying that is somewhat disappointing, what is not disappointing is how it works as far as voice capture goes. Oh my, oh my, you are going to love this. If we add a new voice memo, it will automatically start recording whatever memo I am doing. But, comma, it is also converting my voice into text, which is just straight up awesome, exclamation mark. It captured the note. I can listen back to the audio note at any point in the future. I can give the note a title and I'm going to call this awesome, awesome idea. And I'm going to save this. Now, it has saved this note. Let's go back to our desktop. And do you see, oh, I said a where idea. I typed it in wrong. But isn't this amazing? I've got that same note here on my computer. But the co conversion of your dictated text, I've always had an issue with uh, using voice memos. Voice memos because knowing what's inside of the memo isn't obvious just by browsing and looking at it, even if you title the memos very well. But if you can actually read the text, what's said inside of the memo, winner, winner, chicken dinner, this is one of the most amazing features that's built in. Have a listen back. It will automatically start recording whatever memo I In my have. opinion, this feature alone makes Google Keep an outstanding mobile note-taking app. Being able to capture voice memos, convert them into text automatically, and integrate them with our system. Oh, I, 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 as you can tell, I'm a pretty big fan of that particular feature, of this particular feature. I'm already recognizing that this demo is going on a little bit longer than I planned. So I'm going to truncate things, shorten it up. Now, if you want more information on Google Keep, if you want me to do more videos, by all means, let me know in the comments if you want me to do more with Google Keep or if there's things that I, Google Keep does that you use that I haven't yet showcased. Uh, be sure to let me know in comments. But the last thing I want to show you is how well Google Keep integrates with your email and with, with your other, with the rest of the Google system. So for example, if you look down here in the sidebar, Google Keep is available to, to you when you're in Gmail, along with things like Google Calendar. It's all available to you here. So if you are in an email, if you're working within an email, uh, and, oh, this is just notification that I just shared that note. But if you want to take any email that you, that you receive and you want to create a note Based on that email, if you go here, take a note when you have the email open and you're in the sidebar within the Google within the, the Google sidebar, it then attaches that email to the note so that when you are later in Google Keep, you've got access to that note and you've got access to the originating email that was the basis for making that note. So that's a great productivity system where keeping the information that you need where you need it and accessing it when you need it. Google Keep, it's free. It is not as full featured as an Evernote and some of the other note taking apps, but you can see that what it does, it does very well. It does it simply, it does it elegantly, and it does it very predictably. And the integration between the rest of the Google apps and your smartphone and the desktop version of the app are, is, is profound. It makes it a really valuable app. And unlike some of the other apps, you're not limited to the number of connections you can have. You can have Google Keep on multiple devices, sharing data between multiple devices, and of course, you also have the ability to collaborate, sharing your information with others as well. So Google Keep, uh, it's, a, it's, be, it's a keeper on my desktop. I didn't really want it to be the note, a note-taking app that I used. I wanted to be able to do everything in Evernote, but Evernote's not as good at doing this kind of stuff. Google Keep is. 
I hope you found today's video to be useful. And as I said, if you have any comments or suggestions of other aspects of using a tool like Google Keep, please share them with me in your comments. I appreciate all of your feedback. One last thing before we go. Every week here at Dotto Tech, we host a free weekly tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday on some aspect of productivity or content creation. You are invited, I hope, to see you there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. Thank you.